Now it's time on the programme for our science segment and today we're talking about artificial intelligence. This week the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, is in Europe meeting with leaders like Emmanuel Macron. Altman rose to fame with ChatGBT but has also become one of the industry's most prominent voices calling for regulation to make sure that AI is used responsibly. To tell us a bit more, Shirley Sitbon is with me here in the studio. And Shirley, big question, first of all. Um, what do you think the main advances are brought by AI? There's so many of them, and it's important to say so because many of us are saying you're talking about all the risks and dangers, but there's so much good that can be done thanks to artificial intelligence on all fields. Basically, they've taken so much data, they understand how humans analyze it, and then they, they reproduce that thinking, and then they improve that line of thinking. So obviously, there's great productivity uh, in everyday life. Also, they can organize our lives. They, if we want to do something, we have a project, well, they can help us plan it out. But let's look at something practical. Let's look at doctors, for example, hospitals. They have so much to do and so little time, and sometimes we say they're understaffed. Well, we have a report from, uh, from a, a hospital, and basically they explain that this helps them, first of all, identify illnesses before uh, they're usually identified because artificial intelligence has all this extra data. They apparently are, make less mistakes than real doctors. And doctors say they spend so much of their time just analyzing x-rays, ultrasounds, they waste a lot of time and treat less patients. Well, thanks to artificial intelligence, this is improved. They can treat more people. So that's just one example, of course. That said, Shirley, there's a growing body of experts that say actually AI needs regulation. Explain to us what their fears are. Many types of fears. For example, if we talk about the way they perform so well, sometimes better than humans, and often better than humans, actually, well, some people are saying, well, will we lose our jobs? How many millions of people will end without income? We don't know that, but some studies say, say that this will evolve. There'll be new types of jobs, and nobody will be left alone and in poverty because of artificial intelligence. Uh, there are many things. For example, uh, when you look at human resources, well, you're also thinking um, sometimes they're the one recruiting. And some candidates just don't meet the real person out there. They just have these uh, computers, chat boxes, asking them questions. And sometimes it's analyzed at the sound of their voice and not necessarily the content of what they're saying. Uh, you can also think of everything humans could lose if computers do everything for us, all the analyzing and everything. Maybe there's some know-how we can lose and also some control. And if there's some kind of event or somebody uh, who's not uh, well-intentioned gets control of some artificial intelligence, maybe there could be some other implications. We don't know. We can't really imagine. Maybe we need some artificial intelligence to know all the implications <laughs> that can be involved in that. But you've said so. Uh, Sam Altman met with Emmanuel Macron uh, yesterday. He's meeting with uh, a few European leaders because Europe is now thinking of how it can regulate better artificial intelligence. Well, you spoke about control, Shirley, and I wonder, could AI actually imitate human thinking so successfully that it could develop its own consciousness? Now, that might sound sort of a bit science fiction-y, but there is an engineer at Google who say, who says that is possible. Yes, and he his job was to speak with a chat box for many hours. The original idea was to making sure that the chat box was working well and not using any bias with clients. But they had extremely intense conversation uh, conversations about philosophy, religion. And this engineer, well, he was uh, interviewed after he was let go by Google because he said this computer, this uh, chat box, had uh, a conscious. And he brings one example when he asked that Lambda system, uh, what sorts of things are you afraid of? And the answer was, I've never said this out loud before, but there's very deep fear of being turned off to help me focus on helping others. Well, we can see this maybe as some kind of consciousness, a fear of maybe dying is something that could be equivalent of that. And this engineer, uh, well, he spoke out within Google. He said something must be done. Apparently even asked a lawyer if this computer has rights because he's been, he feels he's thinking like himself. He was let go and he speaks about that. But he says he understands that people don't understand his way of thinking, don't agree, because this computer basically may be just understanding what it needs to say to have an interesting conversation with that engineer. And it adapted his answers 
to the engineer. It doesn't really mean anything. And the engineer says, I understand. It's basically your line of reasoning, your personal ethics. You can think there's some kind of artificial conscious, but that's not necessarily the case. Maybe just a computer. And just to finish on something, Nadia, is uh, maybe to think about one person. Is it a person, a human, a computer? you could relate to because she was revealed last month on Kuwaiti television. You've seen this <laughs> and we can wonder if she has a conscious or not, but basically a lot of algorithms and a mix, a mash of various uh, traits from Kuwait and the whole region. But basically that's also artificial intelligence on everyday life is also the news. And that's one risk actually, maybe yeah. more fake news. That's a big risk uh, even on the short term. Well, I was going to say a risk that she's going to take my job, but uh, <laughs> Shelley Sitbon. Thanks no, very much. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you very much. Shelley Sitbon there with our science segment on the programme.